We live in a really exciting time from global research. All around the world are whispers of open science, also sometimes called open scholarship or open research. Often the values and principles that underpin open research practices include things such as inclusivity, equity and freedom. These are key to developing a sense of shared understanding of open science within the global research community, as well as connections with the wider open movement. On the other hand, open science is often described as a set of research practices divided into two main parts. The first is output-based and includes things such as sharing code and data, as well as making research articles themselves freely available. The second is process-based and more about adding more methodological transparency to improve things such as reproducibility. In this module, we want to step back a bit from this practical view of open science and focus on the principles. To help get things kicked off, we have spoken with six researchers from every corner of the globe, Indonesia, Hungary, USA, Australia, Ecuador and Benin. And these are their open science stories. you see this huge building behind me? This is the library of the Humboldt University in Berlin, in Germany. And I think this was the very place uh, where I first started to think about what open science means to me. As a linguist coming from Hungary, uh, in the academic environment where I'm coming from, this is still a relatively common uh, practice, scholarly practice, uh, to visit university libraries in foreign countries to study either cultural artifacts or to get an update on the latest scientific results and outputs, especially books. So I think this was a rather direct experience for me about inequalities in access to knowledge. Open access and open science uh, offers and, and delivers solutions uh, for such inequalities. So a wonderful thing in this digital and virtual environment in which open science takes place is that it expands your horizons as a researcher, but also as a citizen, uh, without having to cross physical borders. So it is able to connect people who you have never met before, it is able to connect the crowds and the clouds, that is, it is able to connect uh, different user communities with tools and services that could have never met before. And probably most importantly, it is also able to connect ideas that could have never met before. So open science brings an enormous amount of innovation to the table. My name is Justin and for me open science is a new and innovative way to practice science. So I think that open science is very useful for scientists and early careers since it allows people from different countries and regions to collaborate and share knowledge. And open science means a lot to me because I think for people living in developing countries, students and early careers, it's a good way to access to documentation, online documentation for free without being dropped by barriers or different obstacles linked to the kind of publication they want to access to. And open science can help people to discover new fields and discover new ways to collaborate with other people and other scientists around the world. Every kid learns you gotta share what you have If I give what I got You will give right back we make things together better than we make them alone. And when we create, we collectively own, yeah. What we create, we collectively own. But somewhere along the line, in pursuit of money, of profit so took a public good and locked it away hey. behind a paywall mountains of data and it belongs to you and me by all rights it should be free we should Build. What we can build.
Hi, my name's Cooper, and to me, open science is about building a better system of scholarly communication that works for researchers and encourages good science. Sometime during my PhD, I realized that being a successful academic is not necessarily the same thing as being a good scientist. And the core reason for this tension is that over the years, commercial publishers have co-opted scholarly communication and turned it into this race for the flashiest publications that can be sold back to us at a premium. Now this encourages bad science and at the same time nets these companies billions and billions of dollars every year, which ultimately is money that comes out of the research sector and can't be spent on more jobs or research for you and I. So the good news is that we have a set of solutions to these problems and they are known collectively as open science. The bad news is that the current system can discourage you from adopting those practices because they typically either cost you either time or those all important impact factors. So that's why we're building Project Free Our Knowledge, which is basically a platform where you can register your intention to change your behavior. But because you shouldn't have to do this alone, you'll also be able to select a threshold of support that you would like to see in your academic community before you act on your pledge. And in doing it this way, we're hoping that we can kickstart collective action in academia, while at the same time protecting the most vulnerable academics, like early career researchers. So please check out freeourknowledge.org, and I hope that you'll join us in creating a better future for academia. Hi, so here I am now. So this is the uh, front lawn of my uni, that is Institut Teknologi Bandung. It was built back in 1920. So, hi there. Uh, more quiet here, isn't it? So now I'm sitting in the front lawn of my uni. Uh, Institut Teknologi Bandung. So the river you saw earlier is Cikapunung River. It's one of the main river in Bandung, the city that I live. The seemingly clean water is uh, actually contain high concentration of nitrates. It starts from tens of ppm in the northern part uh, to hundreds of ppm uh, to the south. It's way too much nitrates in the water. This fact is not very much noted by the community living in the area. How so? Because one thing, it's because it's not one, uh, not one research paper had published the raw data properly. The only sh they share is static, uneditable PDF. It's not searchable and findable by the reader, even for paper published in the. Uh, internet era. This is where open data as part of open science becomes very important. This is also the reason I put my data into open or public online repository even when I'm not finished yet with the analysis. Open data makes data public. This would send out more benefit than my initial plan. People would contact me to talk about the data and my analysis even if I uh, haven't finished with the paper. This means more engagement. So this is why I do, uh, I do open science every day. My name is Dasapta. I'm a hydrogeologist from ITB and I'm trying hard to promote open science as common scientific practice in Indonesia. I'm Eva Lansoff from Universidad San Francisco de Quito in Quito, Ecuador. Open science means, of course, a variety of things, but what I've focused on most in the past is using blog posts to share what works and what doesn't work in the laboratory, so people have a better understanding of the process behind what we report in our journal papers. And I've also used background reports with calculations 
that are available in the public domain to give more information and background about what I publish in journal papers. In South America, we have a long tradition of open science in the form of open access publishing in journals that are led by scholars instead of by large publishing houses. Um, why open science is important to me is to get give people more information on what is behind the work that we do, as well as from the perspective of living in a developing country, it's, it's difficult to get access to publications, so open access publishing is important for us. We hope that these stories not only serve to help you inspire you in your own open science journey, but also to gain an understanding of the principles behind the global open science community. Open science is much more than just a set of practices, and we're going to need this understanding if we want to develop a healthy, welcoming and strong community. In the rest of this module, we will learn a little more about the principles and the values behind open science, as well as the history of the wider open movement. We will touch on the different elements of open science, how this impact you, your research, and we will discuss what some of the limitations and barriers to open science might be. As part of this, there are a couple of little tasks designed to help you understand a bit more about open science impacts you and what you can do to make it part of your own research workflow and give yourself a boost. There's also quits to test your knowledge, which you will need to pass in order to get certified. Thank you very much for listening and welcome into the Open Science MOOC community.